name is Kurt Williams, Syracuse Coplock founder. I'm Mike Figa. I work with architects and engineers for 9-11 Truth. I've uh, been active on 9-11 Truth for maybe three years or so, and over a year with architects and engineers for 9-11 Truth. What's the process of getting involved for you in general, more specifically? What was your uh, turning point? What experience did you feel when you wanted to start getting involved? Honestly, it was the, it was the case of Andrew Messina, a young 16-year-old boy last May who was shot by a sniper. His mother called. He was a distressed team. Mother calls within 15 minutes of a sniper arriving. He was needlessly shot. Uh, that was a real turning point because he was a young man and a young man that, that I could relate to looking back when I was a young man. So that really hit, that really hit hard for me and uh, I, I decided that that was going to be my area of activism. For me, I always questioned the agenda after 9-11. It was pretty clear that it was, well, it was built upon lies, I mean, even the invasion of Iraq. But um, I didn't question the events. I, I could foresee foreknowledge or something of that nature. Uh, but for me, it was WTC7. So I'm an engineer, biomedical engineer with a master's, but I know basic materials, science, and, and structural engineering. And once I saw that, I was like, okay. And it, it flows from there. And it, it, that tends to be the most common hook for people to start to openly question it. Anybody who doesn't know what coplock.org is, could you give like a general summary of what it's all about, you know, what your organization represents, what's your message for anybody out there? Absolutely. Uh, Coplock is basically a decentralized group of individuals who, who are holding police accountable for their actions. As you, uh, as you can see, I mean, the, the coplock.org, their, their, their tagline is badges don't grant extra rights. And that is really the basis. We want, we want those who are wearing a fruit pretty little costume and a badge to, to take and, and, and abide by the same laws that they expect us to abide by. And we don't see that a lot. And that's why, you know, those involved in coplock.org are hitting the streets, they're taking cameras, they're holding police accountable. And, uh, you know, we don't hate cops. That, that is not, that's a big misconception a lot of times. People see coplock and they're kind of taken back maybe by the name. Don't hate cops. It's not what we're doing here. We, we are uh, informing, making aware that there is a growing problem of police brutality and corruption in a whole. It's importantly for architects and engineers from Island Truth, for people who may not know what the organization's about, maybe just give a brief rundown of what it's all about and what the goal is in general for getting people more aware about 9-11, more of an architectural perspective. Yep, so um, I'm not really sure when they started. It was you know, a few years after 9-11. Uh, Richard Gabe was an architect in California. Uh, came to realize the evidence and realize it was, it was actually, the evidence becomes obvious once you look at it from a scientific perspective. So what they largely do is concentrate on the evidence around the controlled demolition, so the use of explosives or other devices. You know, we don't, there's a number of means which may have been used uh, to take down the Twin Towers and also WTC7. So that, that's their main focal point. It's about getting experts to document it, talk about it, analyze it. So there, there's forensic evidence, there's video evidence. I mean, the evidence is, is quite uh, large, voluminous, whatever you want to say. So that's, that's their main goal. And the good thing about them is they, they stick to this main point, which is one of the biggest ways to look, to understand 9-11. So you can definitely go beyond that and look at, you know, what occurred with different events around 9-11. But yeah, the, the demolition of the three towers is essentially the point. Um, the aspect of knowing your rights, maybe for somebody who doesn't know that, what is? Could you explain that or go into detail about that? Sure. This 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 piece right here is is one of the uh, pieces that I think work really well, and it just discusses the five uh, five major points to take and, and dealing with, with police. And just for example, recording your interaction is, is a really big ordeal. I don't think you need to explain much on that. Uh, don't talk, uh, don't over talk. Don't ask a bunch of questions. Stay silent. That is your right, use it. Uh, as well as, there's only a few things you do need to say. Am I being detained? And am I free to go? These are some of the only two phrases that you want to take and, and, and discuss. Uh, never consent to searches, as, as we, you know, we saw here. Apparently policy, but when you are stopped out in public, you never consent to a search. Uh, and always, and then this goes back to not hating cops and not being aggressive. Be polite, 
but be firm. Stand your ground. Do not be intimidated just because you, you see a badge or you see this. Stand your grounds, know your rights, and everybody will walk away. No, what do you, uh, any advice for people who are, you know, know the information or who may not want to get involved? I mean, from your experience, um, getting past that fear. It's interesting. I mean, I think a lot of people, you know, I've had people like, oh, you're going to get killed. I've had friends who are like, you know, oh, Mike, Mike's going to get killed. Now, now I say, look, th there's, a, there's millions around the world who hold this opinion. And there are thousands upon th hundreds of thousands of people who are active on it. So um, when we have 100% safety in numbers, if you want to get active, really active on it, there really is no, I haven't seen any threats. I mean, the only people the U.S. government really cares to come after is someone who has actionable intelligence, something they want to suppress. We're all working off, let's say, open source intelligence. We're just working with the evidence. My first suggestion uh, would be to visit copblock.org. Uh, they have tons of resources there. You can, you can print out your own graphics there, free to use, decentralized. Anything you see on copblock.org can be used, reproduced. You can take it down to your local copy shop. Um, you know, reading through there, you know, you really have to have, you know, a, a niche, uh, you know, as far as, you know, what you want to you know, go after. If it's police accountability, my first uh, suggestion would be copblock.org. Go over there, see what they have to offer. Look at the other groups. It's not that hard to start a group in your own in your own uh, area. I just here recently started Syracuse Coplock out of Syracuse, New York, and it's not hard. And and you you reach out, and so I would say start at copblock.org. The time is now, and we're going to have, I think, a window where more and more of us can get aware of the quality evidence. And if you don't at least just say your opinion or form an opinion, um, for a lot of people you just you have to go get, get into the evidence and it will become clear. And, and I really, I hope that we learn, that we learn something from this and that it's not just a snooze button that we hit. Because people say that to me all the time, is this gonna wake people up? And I tell them all the time, how many times have you been woken up by your alarm clock and not gotten the fuck out of bed? Follow me. And um, you, you need to understand that. So I know you're hard at work. When we're asleep, your agents are still hard at work to try to derail the movement. But it's a lot larger than us three standing here. It's a lot larger than we are changed. It's a lot larger than public enemy.